Hi there and welcome to All Things Photography. Today I'm going to be talking about DJI um, and in particular the Osmo that they've created. Um, this is basically a handheld stabilization system for um, up to 4K footage. Now the reason I bought this and the reason I'm reviewing this is because I think it's a superb bit of kit. When you see it just like this it doesn't look like much at all. Um, this is just a handle, um, there's no camera on it at the moment. Now. Um, at the moment, you can actually use this with the X5 camera from uh, the Inspire One drone, or you can buy it with a built-in X3 camera. Um, now, it's important for me to mention that the X3 camera that comes with a DJI Inspire One will not fit on here. You have to buy the Osmo with the built-in camera. It's like a small ball head camera, um, and that works perfectly fine with this. It comes with it, um, but it is detachable. Um, but for me, for today, um, I'm using the DJI X5 camera, which is an upgraded version uh, of the X3 for, for the Inspire One drone. Now, a lot of people have been waiting a long time for the adapter to make this work, because like I said, this originally came with the X3 camera, um, but the X5 camera wouldn't fit it. So a lot of people have bought third party um, attachments and adapters that will allow the X5 to go on, but it meant shaving bits of the the Osmo down and that kind of thing. So I waited until they actually had a um, the actual X5 adapter come out, which it now has. So hence I'm doing this review. But like I said, it's for the Osmo with the X5 camera and not the X3 camera that comes with the, the Osmo. Now this is the handle. It's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you've got basically the battery compartment underneath, um, which is in there. And I bought a spare battery. These only last for about an hour to 90 minutes. So it's worth buying an extra battery. Um, on the side here you've got the on and off button which we'll go to in a minute then you've got the video record button the photo button and then you've got a, a cool little jog dial here that will allow you to move the camera independently um, rather than just using it as a gimbal you can move the camera yourself and on the side here is a very handy little unit it means you can put lots and lots of different attachments onto the Osmo which is pretty cool and then on the front here you've got a trigger now this works really well um, you can either Click it to click it twice to reset the camera. So if you've been moving the camera about and doing all sorts of things and it's out of alignment, press it twice and the camera will whiz round and go to the front and we'll show you that in a minute. Press it three times and the camera will turn and face you to do a selfie. In the days of selfies, then if that's what you want to do, then you can. It's good if you're doing a walkabout review, you can hold it out in front, hit it three times, the camera will face you and you can then do your, your kind of interview to camera. Uh, and then click it twice again and it'll go back. Um, pretty good and also one of the better features I think for this button on the front is that when you're moving about generally and we'll show you with the actual um, camera on board it will slowly drift the camera will drift and stop as you move now it, that's great for most applications most things you're filming but if you want to keep the, the heading of the camera absolutely true so you're moving forward and you don't want it swaying about press and hold that down and as you walk the camera will stay absolutely dead straight so it's brilliant and again I'll show you that in a second once we've got it all set up so this is the Osmo, that's all it is at the moment, just a handle with the battery in. So then we've got a few little accessories here, and I'm gonna go through them, and there's links to all these accessories um, on the page somewhere, so you know, you'll know where to get them, and I would recommend a lot of these. Now this is the adapter for the Osmo, uh, for the X5, and it's pretty straightforward, but you've also got extra attachments here to add even more accessories on. Um, it comes with a lens cover for the, for the um, sorry, a cover for the actual connections and everything so the first thing we'll do is take that off and then to connect this to the Osmo all we've got to do is add this bottom bit here into the Osmo like so if I can do this so we line up the dots put it down and then if I turn this to the other camera you can see there we've got a lock button we need to just turn that round to the lock position where the red dot is over there, and it's now firmly in place, so that's cool. At the moment, I'm not gonna need to use this um, as it is flopping about like this. And you can see here, this attachment has a bolt on the front that will actually go down. So if I now push that down and simply screw it into place, that then locks this in position and it gives the adapter a bit more stability once it's on the actual Osmo. And then you've got your two attachments here, and we'll come to those in a second. So now you've got your Osmo with X5 adapter, we need the camera. So this is the X5 camera, and I've got on there an Olympus Zico 12mm f2.8 
f2 lens um, so it's much heavier than the x3 and it's much heavier than the camera that actually comes with the Osmo so just bear that in mind that you are going to add a bit more weight if you're used to the standard Osmo this is going to add a bit more weight to it so then all we need to do I've already taken the cover off this is attach this to the Osmo and you can see this bit here this is where this goes so it's fairly straightforward how it goes into position so we just drop it all into place and then again we bring this round we've got the lock button on the front we just pull round and lock it into place and there you go You've now got an Osmo with X5 adapter and with an X5 camera and a decent fixed lens on there. Um, it's a pretty cool setup and to be honest it's not as heavy as I thought it would be when I first got this through the post. I, I thought it was going to be a bit heavier than this but it's brilliant. And The reason I've got this and the reason I'm buying it or the reason I bought it is because I've got the DJI Inspire 1 which I use this on the X5 with this lens. And it means that once my batteries have run out or once I've landed the, X5, uh, landed the Inspire, maybe I'm at a wedding, I can then pull the camera off, put it straight on the Osmo and carry on filming to my heart's content. Um, in the X5 camera, I use the SanDisk 64 gigabyte cards, which go in just in there. Um, they're the micro SD cards. I find them brilliant. I've never had any problems with them. I've got five of them now. Um, so I use them with this and various other applications but or various other gadgets that I've got but I find it works really well with this. Now at the moment, um, it's all very good. I can turn it on and it will work, but there's no point because I can't see anything. So one of the other gadgets you get with the X5 is this. It's the, the mobile device or mobile phone holder. It's pretty good. If I just put this down for a second, um, it'll fit most mobile devices because you just pull it and it's on like a spring-loaded system, so it will expand out to, to fit whatever size phone you've got. Obviously, it won't take huge iPads and things like that, so just make sure that you've got a phone or a compatible device that, that will work with this. I'm going to be using an iPod. Um, it's the iPod Touch 6, um, so I'm going to, all you do to put this in is pretty straightforward. When you get this, it's quite hard to work out how it works because you get it like that, and it took me a little while to work out how to actually get this together, but you just pull these out, and it attaches into the corners. It doesn't go like that, it doesn't go like that. You have to put them so the corners of your device fit in there. So if we get it to about there, we get the corner of the iPad or iPod, put them in the corners, pull it down, and it fits in place just like that. It's pretty straightforward, and it's not gonna come out. It's, it's pretty well sturdy in there. So that's basically it. It's a great holder, and it's ready to go onto the Osmo. So then, all we do is, you can see here, we just screw it into this Osmo. In fact, a bit of advice, we'll take this out like that. I would always put this attachment onto the Osmo first because you, you have a, a screw underneath here which you need to access to and you can't get access to that when the phone's on. So if I now just put this on and then screw it into place like that. Brilliant actually, uh, very very sturdy attachments you can see it's got the the teeth on there so once they're locked in place it's very unlikely to move um, so once you've got it locked down it's it's very very sturdy so once that's in place then we just once again put the iPod in place and lock it in like that and now you've got the Osmo X5 adapter with X5 camera and good lens and you've got a, a screen to work from so all we need to do now is test it. <laughs> Before I do that there's another peripheral you can get or another accessory and that's this. It works on the same basis with the expandable body so it actually pulls out again like that and what this does is allows you to put a microphone onto the Osmo because I will say the built-in microphone is awful. Um, do not rely on the built-in microphone. The Osmo does make a noise, it's got a fan inside the camera um, so when it's actually playing you're going to pick up all of that noise and it sounds terrible so absolutely don't use the internal microphone. You do now I believe, I, I got one with mine, you do get a small uh, microphone uh, that plugs into the front of the Osmo which is there if you can see that. There's a small, um, a little one about three and a half millimeter I think it is, uh, the, the standard jack for a, for a microphone that goes into the front there and you can just have the small microphone dangling out but it's still fairly close to the camera um, and it's non-directional. It's, it's like one of these microphones, like the Lavelle mic I'm wearing. So it's it's good, and it's a, a fair fair point by them to actually add it. But I would recommend getting a, a better external microphone. Um, so with this, it's pretty handy. All you do is 
attach it onto the back here. So you latch it onto the bottom there, just pull it up and it locks in place and that's it. And I always bring it as far over as possible. So that now is a cold shoe, a hot shoe on top of the camera is for flash guns and things like that. This is known as a cold shoe because there's no actual electronic attachments. It's just to hold the, the uh, microphone in place. So then all you do is take your microphone. I've got the Rode VideoMic Pro here. You just slot it on, lock it down like that, and that's now in place. And then all you do is take the cord and plug it into the front like that. So I believe that's all of the accessories we've got, accessories we've got at the moment to actually get going. Um, it's a pretty good setup. Even with all these bits and pieces on, it's still fairly light. So for hand holding, it's actually not bad at all. Um, I think most people would be able to carry that for, for you know, for a good hour or so. Um, but it's, it's pretty good. And what I'm going to do now is actually start filming. So first things first, I'm actually going to turn the Osmo on to show you what happens. So once we switch it on, it's just pull that button down once and immediately it will set itself like that. And you can see there working perfectly straight away. Now, as you see, if I turn the Osmo, it will slowly come to a gliding stop and turn the other way. So it's very, very good. It works really well. Very similar to things like the DJI Ronin or the, any other three axis gimbals you can get, especially on the ones uh, that you get with you know, quadcopters and things like that. So that's pretty good. So for, for most walking about, that's good. But what you have to be aware of is if you pull it over too much, you may get things like the Rode microphone in. So sometimes it's worth hanging that actually underneath. So rather than having it on top, have the microphone underneath so that as you turn around quickly, the microphone won't show up in the shot. Okay, so at the moment that's that's forward facing. It's the general setup for most filming um, and it's pretty good. You can see as we go up and down as well, it will follow down and follow up. So it's a really good fluid, smooth movement. And let's go through the buttons now. So like I said, if we hit this front button, let's say, let's say I've moved it. Now, one other thing I learned recently is that you can actually, you think you're gonna damage the gimbal, but you're not. You can actually turn the camera to wherever you want and leave it there. And if you don't want it there, you can move it round have it there, you can move it up, have it there, and turn it around. So you're able to actually slowly and carefully move the gimbal camera wherever you want just to align the shot, okay? So let's say you've, you've set up a shot and you've aligned it and you've finished filming, hit the front button twice, and it will reset to the front, piece of cake. And like I said before, if you hit the front button three times, one, two, three, it'll turn around and do a selfie. So you can walk around filming yourself while looking at the screen doing whatever. So it's a pretty handy unit. So then hit it twice again, and it goes back round to the front. Uh, so it's a, it's a great unit. And like I said, you can see at the moment, it's as I turn, it's moving about. If I push and hold the button down, just do twice to center it, hold the front button down, it will then stay in the direction that I'm moving. So it won't move. So it adds a, another element to your stability. So it's pretty cool. So if you're following someone walking along, you can actually just keep looking at them. So even if I turn this all the way round, it's still going to face that direction and as soon as I let go it will then go back to normal but it's out of alignment so we hit it twice and it's back round to the front so the Osmo is a brilliant bit of kit for what it is for what you pay um, I paid about 215 pounds I think just for the handle and then obviously the adapter was about another 75 so for 300 pounds the ability for me to put the X5 camera on and all these bits and pieces I already had it turns this now into a really handy little camera um, what's good about the Osmo is it can allow you to do some really cool filming. So you can actually do things like walk up to a window, pass it through, someone on the other side takes it over, and it looks like your camera's flown through the window. So there's loads and loads of different ways you can get really creative with this bit of kit. And I love it, but you can probably hear, if I put this close to the microphone, that there is a fan inside the X5. Now, obviously when you're flying, you don't record any sound, so you know it doesn't matter so much, but when you've got a microphone fairly close by, it may pick up that sound. Now, to attach the to obviously see what you need to see what you're doing. So to actually see what you're doing, you have a, I've got here, like I say, an iPod, but you can use an iPhone, you can use an Android device. Um, and it's just using the Go app, um, the DJI Go app, which is free. So if I go into the iPod here and I go to the, first of all, my settings. So I have to actually set the Wi-Fi up. As soon as you turn the Osmo on, it starts creating a Wi-Fi signal. So whatever device you've got will pick up that signal. So you can see on here, if I go to Wi-Fi, Click on Wi-Fi, I hope you can see that. It will choose a network and you can see the Osmo comes up there. So if we just click on there, it will then connect to the Osmo. Now when you first do this with your device, it will ask you for a password. And the generic standard password that 
all of these um, Osmos get is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you put that in to start with, then it will connect to the Osmo. You can see we're now connected and it's ready to go. So all I need to do now is come out of that and go into the Osmo, sorry, into the DJI Go app. So we click on there, go into the app. The camera should come up, he says. There we go, the camera's come up, Osmo Pro, because it's got the X5 camera on. If we just click connect, it says camera connected in green and then it's got a camera button underneath and we just hit that and voila, there you go. We're now connected. You can see that hopefully on this camera here. Um, you can see there, we've got all the basic, if you've got a, um, a drone uh, like the Phantom or a Inspire One, then the app works exactly the same way with this camera, it's exactly the same. So you've got your basic, you can do stills, you can do video, you can change all the, um, the, the file sizes, the, the, the shooting sizes, like um, you can go from HD, uh, you can go slow-mo with 50 or 60 frames a second, you can go up to 4K. Um, so you've got everything there. Um, you can change here, you've got, you can change the aperture. I'm in manual mode, I always shoot in manual mode. It's much better, so you can actually change all of those. You can change the ISO and bring the brightness up a bit, like that, and then obviously change the aperture. Um, so you've got shutter priority, aperture priority, and manual and automatic. I tend to stay away from automatic unless I'm sort of running and gunning, um, just very quick setup. So you can basically set that up, and then you've got here the other bits where you can do single shot, multiple shot, or interval timing. Now, one thing that's peeved me at the moment is that on my Android device, on my uh, Samsung phone, when I first set up this with the app, I was able to do the panoramas and the time-lapsing. Um, so I used those and I got in touch with DJI to ask why I can't do that because you can see they don't show up here on the um, on the iOS 9. So there's there's no facility to do that at the moment. Um, so they said there would be an upgrade where it should allow that to happen. The upgrade came yesterday. I upgraded and it wasn't there. It still didn't appear on here. But the worst thing was when I upgraded the Android app, it vanished. So I lost the ability to actually do the, the panorama and the, uh, sorry, the time lapsing on the on the Osmo, so I'm a bit gutted. I think they're gonna do a firmware update soon to actually allow that back on because it's quite a good system. You can set up the, the Osmo to do a panorama. Once you set all the parameters in, it will just work around and do the whole panorama for you. So for now, I've actually installed a, an app called the Osmo Pano, I think it's called. Uh, it costs about nine pounds and it's, it works just as well, if, if not better, for doing panoramas. But at the moment, that's irrelevant. We're doing this for the review. So you can see here, we've got it all set up. And as you can see, it's brilliantly stable. If I just hold that dead still, you can see hopefully on this camera that it's not moving at all. You can see that it's really, really stable, really, really good. So it's it's just a brilliant, brilliant gimbal. The the X5 is fantastic and this the Osmo works really well with it. But like I said, you do need an external um, microphone. Now, there's lots and lots of things with the app. If you've got a DJI Go app, then you, you'll know all about it. So there's no point in me really going through it all. But like I said, for now, it's just, it's just to show you how to actually set the whole thing up. But what I'm gonna do at the end of this video, um, once I've finished rabbling on, is actually show you some footage from, from the actual camera in various scenarios. So I'm gonna take it out and about, I'm gonna actually attach it to the car, which leads me on to the next point. Uh, there's a spare battery, by the way. Um, definitely worth getting, because like I said, they only last for about an hour to 90 minutes. But for now, I hope that's helped with the actual Osmo itself and the X5 adapter and the X5 camera. Brilliant, brilliant setup, and I would totally recommend it. I don't normally review things I don't recommend, so trust me, this is a, a very good setup. What my favorite bit of kit is, is this. I've already taken it out on the car, but I'm gonna do some extra filming, um, and I can safely say that this is very, very good. This is the car mount, which comes with, uh, well, it doesn't come with the camera, but you have to buy it as an accessory. Uh, I think it was about 40 pounds but it's brilliant, it's a very, very good car mount. I've used GoPros on the car before, and you only get a one single suction cup to actually put onto the car. With this one, you get three. So if I quickly show you how well it works, you have to have all these latches up, make sure they're all up. In fact, it hasn't even locked down yet, and it's stuck to the table, so it's very good. So if I turn that around, you can see all these latches here have to be up, and what you do is take each one individually, push it down, and push that bit down, line that one up, push it down, and push the latch down and then the same over here make sure it's in place push it down as far as you can i'm doing it one-handed so it might not work as well and then push that down and it's pretty stable if i now that's a heavy table and it's not coming off okay that's brilliant it's going to stick to the car like glue 
So once it's on the car, and I would recommend if you're going to put this on your car, make sure you've polished the surface of the car so there's no dust underneath it, and make sure all the plastic suction cups underneath are free of any dirt and grime, and it will stick like you won't believe. It's brilliant. So then all we do is, right, good point. <laughs> What we need to do now is disassemble this if you're going to put it onto a car because it will not fit on the car if you've got the, the camera attached. I'm going to turn it off for a second. So you just pull that button down and hold it and it will turn off. I'm going to take the phone, sorry, the iPod out. And I'm going to take the microphone off like that, unplug it. And then we need to take this adapter off. So if you want to attach it to a car, you can't have this on the side. So all we do is just undo this, unscrew it like so and then this bit is where we attach the actual uh, the car mount to so let's turn it around so you can see it on that camera so you just literally put that in like so screw it up like you did with the phone adapter and then you just screw it into place like that and that is stable the whole thing's stable I'm not going to pick it up by the hand handle but you can see it's not coming off so that is really I hope you can see that on this camera it's really really super stable so that is your setup for the for the for the car if I just turn that round the way I had it or way I put it on the front of the car for one of my shots was to have it right up like that so when you turn it on the camera's fairly high up so you can have this on the roof you can have it on the bonnet and it was fairly high up so I didn't get the bonnet in the shot but if you want to actually let's come off if you want to that's that came off then because this isn't a proper I haven't set it all up properly and um, like I said cleaning all the surfaces and everything but if we now turn this round if we imagine that's on the car bonnet now what I can actually do is make it a lot lower so if we line this up properly you can bring that right down to there and then tighten it up and as you see the camera is now facing straight down so all we do is hit the button on the front twice and it goes straight out in front, so it will now face the road. It's brilliant. Wherever the Osmo is laying, whatever angle you've got it at, hit the button underneath twice, and it will realign the camera, so you can have it nice and neat and flush on the, on the bonnet of your car. And that's, that's it. And when you're in the car, if you're in the passenger seat, obviously not driving, you can then operate the, the Go app from the car. So you can turn, so once it's actually open, if I reset this up, I've got a, when I've unconnected it, you have to actually reconnect because it will lose that Wi-Fi connection. So once I've done that, once I'm in the app again, go back into the Go app and connect the camera. If it's going to, come on. There we go. Once you're in the car, so imagine this is on the front of the car and you're driving along, or your, your friend's driving along or your companion, you can actually operate the camera from the app. So you, you push and hold down, so you tap the app, and then you can actually move the camera around within the app. So once it's on the front of the car, if you're on the passenger seat, you can do all your filming from the car. You haven't got to touch the, the, Go, uh, the, the Osmo at all. It's just there, which is brilliant. Again, you can do all your settings from here. You can move the camera about. You can adjust focus if you're on manual focus, which I like to use. You can do the, the focusing from here. So it's brilliant. You can put this anywhere you like and then operate it from, from the Go app remotely. It's just brilliant. So that's pretty much it for the, for the Osmo and the whole setup with the X5 camera. I hope it helps. Um, like I said, I'm going to put a link to all the bits and pieces, all the things you get with the Osmo, and also the things that I would recommend you buy as accessories, because when you've got this, it just works. You can put it anywhere you like, and you, do, you can do some incredible filming. And the quality from the X5 camera is absolutely superb. The 4K footage is brilliant. Um, so that's pretty much it for the setup. You can have a look now at some of the footage I've done, um, both on the car, walking around town, and generally just messing about with it. So I hope that helps, and we'll see you on the next video.